Peg is in, but she's. Uh, oh, oh, there you are. Just upside down. <laughs> <laughs> There you are. Hi, Peg. And you're muted. Dunder Mifflin shirt. <laughs> you're yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so we should start the meeting. We're <coughs> late. Welcome to the Finance Committee meeting. Of, what is today? September 9th. Uh, minutes. We have minutes from August 12th submitted by uh, Councilor Conniff. I'll move that we accept them. Peg, you're second. Up. Oh, sorry, right, second. second. <laughs> uh, Councilor Conniff? Yes. Dan Riss, yes. And Bill Lynch, you're, you're an abstention. Okay. We have a few other minutes, Bill. If you could catch up on them, I'd appreciate it. I will do my best. Okay, moving on. I just wanted to relay that uh, our auditor Val, I was going to have her do a little more on the uh, recent report, but her husband is uh, having surgery. So I called her and told her not to rush back. She was going to do that from Worcester. Um, just to update you, she did say one of the reasons, I think she mentioned this 500 people hadn't paid their taxes she felt might be because the tax collector put out a twice a year um, tax uh, bill. So they all got a tax bill in January, but not one in April. And uh, she thought that that created some problem with people not paying their second quarter taxes. So she's asked the tax collector to reconsider that sending out quarterly bills might be better but she's not concerned um but she's going to go over that even further on the 25th because we're going to have a meeting i do know we're going to get something on this particular um council to have a finance meeting on the 25th so on to the stipends i'm going to share my screen i sent you this today um, I thought we'd go over it, have a little discussion, maybe make a decision at the next meeting. I also found out that I put, uh, when I said how we would pay for it, I used the wrong fiscal year here, so I changed that. I'll just go over my proposals. They're based on the fact that being around a long time, I think we should pay the mayor, the council president, and three of our boards uh, a stipend especially the boards because they do a heck of a lot of work, the regulatory boards um, like the BPW. So I'll just go over each of them. The $90,000 I'm proposing for the mayor's position is based on the fact that it hasn't had a raise in a few years. And if it's a four year term and we give that position no increase, it'll be something like eight years before there's a new increase. And if you did 3% per year, not even compounding it on the current salary, which is 75,000, it would be almost 90 anyway. So my thought was to increase it to 90. That's in keeping with Agawama, North Adams and Greenfield, similar populations. Um, they're very close to that figure, as you can see here. So that's where I came up with 90. And again, these are all starting points. Everybody will have their own opinion and discussion on it. I do not propose an increase in the city council salary. I don't think in our small community, we should be running for office to get a paycheck. That's just me. I've always, I think 4,000 is, is about as much as I would. But I am proposing that the city council president get an extra thousand in stipend. There's a great deal of work. I was president and I was always dealing with something um, urgent. And I know Peg would concur that there's a great deal of work in the presidency. And I think that stipend is worth it. And a lot of communities do that. Um, no increases here to the school committee either. I am proposing a major increase to the BPW salary, which was currently $300 a year um for a total of 900 per year per board to three thousand dollars a year 
uh, they have a huge responsibility regarding, especially sewer and water rates. They answer to the people, they don't answer to us. And I think given their responsibility, they ought to be paid for it. Also the planning and assessors, the assessors is a mild increase from $75 a month to something like $80 a month. But the planning, they're not getting anything now and I think they should, they work so hard. That's just me, I don't propose anything for zoning um, over there. The totals, would be the total increase is 29,400 over the current 126,000 that we're paying these particular boards. Um, my idea on paying it, I know we looked at thinking about paying the mayor over a couple of years, but it actually is that because the first fiscal year, fiscal year 22, the mayor's position wouldn't be funded till January 1st, so that's half of the 15,000 because that's half a fiscal year. And then the second half would be paid in 23 because that's when the full 15,000 would kick in. So it's kind of automatic that you split it into two, two uh, payments. City Council President and the BPW the first year, 16,600. Second year add the planning department and the assessors for a total of 12,800. So that takes the the, the increase is over two fiscal years. So that's my thoughts. I open it up to the committee for your thoughts on this. Again, this is just to get us started. Bill or Peg? <laughs> Bill. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rist. Um, so the, the council president, you're proposing a $1,000 increase for, that's per year, right? So it'd be $2,000 per term, right? Per term, yeah, it's five thousand a year. Right now, we all get four thousand a year. Oh well, yeah, I'm saying that additional thousand for being the president. Mm -hmm. um, and and can you just scroll up a little bit? I wanted to compare what other communities you have listed here. So Lawrence's council president gets twenty thousand dollars a year additional. Yeah, and the council pre the councilors get fifteen each. Oh, so the council president gets five thousand dollars more for being the president. Yeah, in that particular scenario here. Yeah. It's all right, so it's two thousand dollars in Walburn, and and all these other communities don't have any stipend for the council president, correct? All the blank ones? No. Okay. Well, let me uh, change that. I was unable to get North Adams, Greenfield, and Agawam's full reports. I only was able to tap into their budget to get the mayor's salaries and the city council salaries. So I cannot confirm whether they pay the city, the planning assessors, I, I can't confirm that. Their clerks did not respond to Barber's inquiry. Okay. And then um, the school committee. Uh, um, so we're looking, we're not looking to do anything for their chair. Um, you know, I mean, they're also like, or, you know, I mean, they, their president deals with a lot. They're dealing with a lot as well. You know, I think if we look at that, we should look at a school committee president or a school committee chair kind of in the same fashion if we're, we're, we're talking about this, you know, and, and just to, to put that in the proposal as well, even if it's $500 or whatever, you know, they're doing extra work as well. I have no objection to that. First one. Just to just to have it on the table as conversation. That's uh, I'm not saying I'm Actually, in favor. All of, this, okay. all of this is conversation. Correct. Yeah. I just uh, I think if we're having this conversation, we should include them as well. Uh, anything else, or Peg? Do you want to say something here? No. I you know I I think um, I think this is these are all good numbers. I think they're reasonable numbers given um where we are vis-a-vis -vis some other communities of similar size um and um i don't think it's unreasonable for the for what we're trying to accomplish i think i think these numbers are very reasonable and not out of the realm of possibility for especially you know my big worry has always been as we move into a four-year term of mayor 
is the candidate base. And the candidate base, when you're talking about a two year term, and if you have a career and you're gonna put your career on hold for two years, it's a burden, but it might not be an, a huge burden. Um, if you're asking someone to put their career on hold for four years, I feel like um, the, the pool of candidates might be greater if we have a salary that is commensurate to that of a CEO of a $50 million corporation. Totally agree. I also think if it's a four-year term, we can't ignore it at this time because it will be four more years before we, the next city council could consider it. And given, even though there might be a little loophole in there that I think you mentioned about the charter, um, I don't think it would be wise for a city council to give the next mayor a raise in the middle of her term, her in his or her term. Um, and that was the idea of making it January 1st of the new term. So I think it will be four years before we increase the mayor's position or the council has an opportunity to increase the council's position. Bill. Thank you, Councilor. So uh, the other question I guess I'm looking at, you know, as, as I continue to um, mull it over in my head. So we're similar to, um, you know, the Greenfield, Newburyport and stuff like that. West Springfield is actually uh, 10, uh, 12,000 uh, more in residence, but um, obviously substantial business uh, differences, you know, on, on the uh, commercial side of it. Um, Agawam is, is about 11,000 more than us and about, uh, you know, the same as, as West Springfield in population. Um, they also have pretty, pretty good, um, business areas. Um, is there any, or have we also looked at, um, the terms of, uh, that, those are just comments about, you know, uh, commercial zones and stuff like that. And similarities, but the, uh, the terms of the Agawam mayor is at 86,000 at four years, uh, is Greenfield. So they're 89,000 population, 17,000 residents. Um, is that a two year or four year? I didn't look into that. I know the reason we went four years is because a lot of the local mayors are joining us for four years now, Polio, Northampton. Yeah, I understand why we went to four years and everything, but, you know, if we're going to compare it, you know, is, is Greenfield a two-year term and they haven't jumped over that threshold of making it a four-year term and that's why their salary is still low, you know, on, or on the lower end of the spectrum of, of cities that you have listed here, you know, where Newburyport is a little bit higher at 102,000, um, similar population, but that could be a four-year term, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I guess I don't agree that the term should be an issue because it's about the responsibility. As Peg mentioned, it's a $50 million business that the CEO is running and we should pay them accordingly. The other thing I didn't bring up, which I, I can, is that a lot of these communities have a lot more staff in the mayor's office than we do. And that has to be considered um, because that kind of assistance they probably need it in Northampton and in you know the larger communities, West Springfield. But I think that should be considered too. Staffing, the mayor has to do a lot on her own. So, or his own. Pardon me. Or his own. It's his or her own. Yes, I'm sorry. It's important that we constantly emphasize this is the mayor's position. We don't know who will be mayor in January 1st, 2022. Exactly. I like the notion of trying, we, we, we have to change the ordinances if we're gonna pay the DPW or planning, and we can make the ordinance commencement with July 1st, 2022, July 1st, 2021. Uh, so that's why I was able to, I feel, split the costs here over two years and it's not, it's, it's a small amount of money, even though it is 29,400. If you break it down to two years, it's 16,600 one year and 12,800 another year. I just think we might retain more uh, of these uh, valued people um, if we pay them more. 
we're not actually increasing the assessors much. It's only a three hundred dollar increase, but planning department planners and the BPW they ought to get paid. That's just my opinion anyway. But I like the fact that we can. I don't know, Jen, if you want to chime in, I think splitting this over two years is a little less of an impact. Peg, go ahead. Um, and I don't know if Jen is here, but I definitely think that these numbers need to be bumped up against the um, prospective budget for 2020. I don't even know what number next year is. 2020. Two? 2022. Yeah. Yeah, Fiscal year 22. I, was, I, was I think these numbers need to be somehow incorporated into, and I'm sure Val is in some way planning already the 2022 budget. And uh, pros prospectively, it would be interesting to see if it uh, creates high blood pressure and heartburn or if it is something that she thinks is doable. Because if she comes back and says, this is not something that we can support or these things need to be cut if we're going to do this that's important information for us to have yeah and i think i was kind of hoping the mayor could chime in she wouldn't have anything to say about the mayor's salary but she would have something to say about um well they're all done by ordinance so the mayor is a, can't veto any of the ordinances um i think if the council wants to do it we, the council you know five votes but I'm feeling like uh, it's not a big increase, but you're right. The budget has to be looked at. What was the net again, Dan? 29400 over two years. So that's all in. That's everybody's increase. What would a single year hit be, 29000 Yes, after 2022. That's the increase over this FY 2021. Jen, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, kind of like in keeping with what you were saying about Val, when it comes to the budget, Val does Val does the revenue projections. So essentially, the mayor and I have to make the expenses fit into whatever she, whatever you know, um, directive she gives us. Like this year it was level funding. Um, so essentially, what's going to happen is if she um, proposes level funding again this coming year, which I anticipate she will. Um, this would be looked at obviously as an increased expense. So that said, if we want the bottom line to come out the same um, as it did for fiscal 21, then that would mean that much in cuts somewhere else in the budget. That's not, that's not to say that it can't happen. I mean, you know, we've had, um, We've had, you know, uh, people in uh, higher positions retire or leave or whatever. And, you know, so people coming in might not be getting paid what they were getting paid. So it's not to say that it, it can't, but, you know, that's, that's where the, the heartache will come in come budget, uh, budget time is, you know, where do we get this money from if we want level funded? And it's 16600 the first year. So next July 1st, that's what it would be. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, <laughs> these are ordinances. The mayor and the council president's salary has to be decided by January, by December 31st of this year. That's by charter. The other ordinances can be happen anytime. They are not restricted as to, because they're not elected official positions. So we could hold off on them if we decide not to. That's just another option. But we have to consider the, the mayor's salary, the mayor position salary, and the, and the president of the school committee, the president of the, of the council. If we're going to do that, we have to do that by December 31st, which would be less. It would be 7,500, 8,000, 8,500 8, if we did the 500 for the school committee as Bill is proposing we consider school committee chair. But less. Bill. Um, all right. So the BPW currently gets three hundred dollars a year per candidate, right? It's nine hundred dollars total, yeah. Correct. And you're proposing to go three thousand mm -hmm. and 
9,000 total. Um, nobody, no other BPW uh, uh, gets a stipend currently. According to this, I don't see any numbers above. This one. Oh, okay. So I, I have, I don't have complete figures though, but yeah. it is true. I mean, I, I can say this as a fact that the people that do it know that they're not getting paid. So nobody's asking for this. It is me trying to give them the respect they deserve because of the amount of money. This is just my opinion. I've been around for 26 years knowing what the BPW the planning department have to decide as regulatory agencies. They should be paid something to show that we respect the fact that they get that. And then on the uh, on the planning board, so we got we got a thousand dollars times five people. Mm -hmm. There's the one there for forty five hundred dollars. Is that how many people is that for? Does that represent? Do you know? I do not. This one. Uh, yeah. That's also, the it's forty five hundred per, and I don't know how many members. I'm imagining they have at least three or four. I mean, most planning boards have five. I think it may be mandated having five, so I'm not sure. So then, if we had the twenty two hundred or the forty five hundred, it'd be less than a thousand per individual if they have five members, right? That's forty five hundred per member. I'm pretty sure. These these figures up above are per member. They are so they're they're paying twenty two thousand dollars for for their planning board on above and beyond the salary. I right. believe so. Yeah. Well, it's the planning board, not the planning department. I'm sorry, but uh, some of these are pretty outrageous. I mean, if you go to Boston, the money they're paying people is outrageous. Yeah, but they're full time people. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're employees. People. That's true. You got a good point. Very good point. Which is why ours aren't that high. I mean, when you consider it, some people wanted the city council over the years uh, to get $10,000 and I, I would never vote for them. We're not full-time people. But in Boston, they get, what, 30 a year? But they're almost full-time, aren't they? Yeah. And it's Boston. It is Boston. <laughs> Quite a thing. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be enough to convince me to be a city councilor there, but whatever. <clears throat> well, the other thing that having trouble getting people to stay on these boards, if we're paying them a little bit, maybe it'll keep them there. Stan mm -hmm. McCoy, Homer and I ran into Stan. He said, geez, I would have stayed. <laughs> 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 so I don't know if he would have because it's also a headache. I mean, you get a lot of flack. And I'm not saying $300 eases or whatever it is a year, uh, a month eases that pressure, but it's something. And you know, this isn't, uh, for me, it's not a deal breaker. I just wanted to bring it forward and see what the council felt, see what the mayor felt. I kind of very, I'm pretty adamant about the mayor's salary. I believe the mayor's position needs an increase, otherwise it won't be touched. And I agree with Peg, it might attract people that have to put aside their career for four years. But all the others are up for debate. I could be convinced. Omar thinks they're too high, right, Omar? Go ahead, Omar, say what you want. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I do think uh, is for BPW is too high, but I, it's, it's a few numbers that I have here in my head running everywhere. Uh, first, uh, the school committee members have 1,400 bucks a year, and they run a $17 million budget. Uh, that's why I think BPW is the 3,000 for them is too high compared to what the school committee uh, members are having. If you compare both, uh, and I know it's only three members in the BPW, but if you compare what the school committee is doing, is they're doing a lot of um, everything for the education of our kids. And, and they have to do the budget for the school is around $17, $17 million. So that's why, and against the 3,000 for the BPW. I 100% they deserve more, uh, but I don't think 3,000 is that the number. Um, the mayor, I agree that um, it's a tough position to have. I know it's a lot of work to do. Uh, probably 75,000 is a little low for that, but comparing all the cities, they have 
uh, more citizen than us, I, I think it's kind of unfair. And to the point to the um, uh, Madam uh, President uh, Conniff, uh, I agree. The CEO of a company, uh, we have to pay them well. But the only qualification that we, we require to be a mayor of East Hampton basically is running a great campaign and just convince people to vote for you. I agree with, uh, with you that, you know, it's 40, 40 something million dollars is, is a tough uh, company to run, but we have to have in mind the, the qualification for being a mayor and qualification to be a CNO and a, and a really important company is a, a little different. Uh, but I agree that there should be a little bit more. I don't know, again, if 90,000 is that number, uh, and I know the consular risk just bring that number just to a point of start. Um, and and I, I'm okay with working on that uh, because I agree 75,000 for four years that someone have a career is, 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 tough, is, is tough to make uh, a decision of, of making a decision to run for mayor and do something for our city. Um, I think that's what I have. But my, my concern is, 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 is that like, you know, the, the school committee members have $1,400 a year when they have to run uh, a campaign and they have to deal with $70 million and they have to deal with all the, a lot of other stuff related to the school. Um, and, and that's why I think 3,000 for DPW is too much. I have to say that when I came up with the 90,000, it's based on the fact that I did 75,000 times 3% times eight years. So at the end of the four year term, it's $18,000. And that's not without, that's not compounding it. That's just doing 2,250 times eight years. So I came up with a figure that had something to do with a inflationary increase, say a cost of living increase. It wasn't just hold on the year. Um, I, don't, I don't disagree with you on the school committee. I almost want to give them more than reduce the BPW, but we could do both. Again, it's, uh, the BPW has to raise rates and has to deal with a lot of stuff like that. And there is only three of them. I don't think paying more money to the school committee will necessarily attract more people to run. I don't know. I'm willing, I'm willing to do, do anything right now if I can be convinced anyway. Okay. So um, I'm going to disagree a little bit with my esteemed colleague, Councillor Gomez. Um, and I also, to your point, Dan, where, uh, you know, it, it may or may not make more people run. I, to me, it has zero to do with the campaign that you are running, because if you are a viable candidate, your resume does matter like your work experience does matter as a candidate and or at least it does to me and i think it does to a lot of voters the experience that you bring to the job is not that you know how to campaign that is the least amount of work that you need to do i think what it is is what do you bring to as a ceo to a 50 million dollar city and what can you do to uh, manage that and I think that's daunting and it's huge and if if you know I mean you know I, I suppose there is a time we could end up with two candidates who were certainly not deserving of ninety thousand dollars in pay but there you go like that you know the job is what the job is and I am more willing to pay the person who is doing the job than the um, whether or not they're a good campaigner and similarly with the school committee, I don't know that it will necessarily attract people, but it is, it's compensating them. I, I do agree with Councillor Gomez. It's compensating them for the, the responsibility that they hold within this city. And what, again, whether or not they campaign or they're a good candidate, at, doesn't matter. Once you're in the job, it's the job. And the job has a huge responsibility and you should be compensated for the amount of work that we are asking you to do. So and, you I now, and I am now favor, done. Would you be in favor of increasing the school committee? I, 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 I would. Actually, that was a compelling argument that I had not thought of. Mm -hmm. So I am on board with that. And I, you know, how we toggle that and if we have to maybe defer 
BPW for a year or two until we can figure out our expenses coming out of COVID. That's a very responsible way to look at it. But I think, you know, when you're looking at the folks who are managing, you know, a third of the budget, that's a big deal. And maybe they should be compensated. And maybe in another year, two, a couple of fiscal cycles, when we get out of this and we know where we land, then we start to look at some of the boards and committees. So if we went up to $3,000 per year at the school committee, that's an increase of $1,600 per or $9,600 a year. That would and you take, what if you take, take away the off BPW the table? for a year, that's the same money or two. What if you yep. take all the committees off the table and just talk about school committee, uh, city council and mayor? What are those numbers if we just isolated it to those three? It would be, if I did this, if we did this to 3,000, that's $1,600 and there's six members. So that's $9,600. Yep. And we take 900 off here, or we take these off completely. Yep. Um, or let's just do it per year. This is uh, 16,000. This uh, blah, blah, blah. this increase is nine six hundred. I have to do some math. Hold on. It's about eight thousand less ish. Over the entire the all in. Over the whole thing. If you all in and you take out the the committees and you up the school committee and you're just looking at city council, school committee, and the mayor. What is the net increase for those? And I would argue that it's probably about twenty five thousand six hundred. Yeah, so it's about what? Uh, well, so you save four thousand dollars because you increased the uh, school okay. committee so much. You know, we have, but, you, but you don't do anything with planning and assessors. You right, leave them where they are. Anything with planning assessors or whatever. So I did the fifteen thousand for the mayor, the thousand dollars for the city council, and then ninety six hundred for the. Uh, uh, School committee, it's twenty five thousand six hundred dollars. So we're saving like forty five hundred dollars, right. ish. Okay. And so I don't, I don't disagree with increasing the school committee. I just hate to not do these. They work so hard. I mean, I'd be entertained of just reducing them. And secondly, we can write the ordinance so they don't kick in until FY twenty three. I mean, we can write the ordinance for anything we want. We could defer it to the next city council, but right. I would rather try to do something now. I don't know. Yeah, I, have, I, I my concern with the school committee, I would vote in favor of that. Yeah, my only concern is the unknown impact from COVID. Oh, sorry, Bill, I just completely, sorry. I just stepped on protocol. That's all right. <laughs> You can finish your comment, Peg, and then- No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say, I, 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 I think that we can't get too cute with the amount of money we wanna give people because we have no idea what's gonna happen in the next 12 to 18 months as a fallout from COVID. And so I'm adamant about the mayor, like that's the hill I wanna die on, to be honest with you. And city, school committee, I think that's really important. And city council president, I think that's really important. And the rest of it, but I'm, like those two could go by the wayside as far as I'm concerned. The one that I am most adamant about is the mayoral salary. Bill. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple comments, I guess. Um, with, with the normal increase, and Jen, you might be able to help, you know, refresh my memory on this for, for the employees, um, they get a one and a half percent increase each year, right? Not three percent, or is it three? Nope. It's um, for pay plan employees. The new salary schedule that was put into effect this year, um, I believe, it's two point five each year. Two point five in January of each year. I think three percent, Bill, because we just did the fire department three percent. Well, that's where that came from, so you know. Yeah, a lot a lot of the unions are around three or at least have been. 
up to this point. Okay. Um, and then the other comment um, was around the council president, you know, maybe we don't look at a thousand dollars, we look at $500 a year and also the chair of the school committee getting a $500 stipend for being the chair, which would still equate to that $1,000, um, but the two elected chairs, so you're an elected official and you're also a chair of a committee, you know, um, I think I could get behind that. It'd be $500 split amongst the two and it'd still be that $1,000 a year. Um, and then uh, we were talking about the school committee going up from 1,400 to 3,000. Um, that's more than double, you know, I mean, I might be good at entertaining $2,000 a year per person as a step. I, I don't, I think, um, you know, even with the mayor and, and kind of what I was going to look at was, you know, not, not doing $15,000 increase, but let's look at half of that $7,500 and then revisit it again in a few years after, after we have a better understanding of COVID, um, because, to, to Jen's point, whatever we increase this by, it's gonna come somewhere else out of the city, whether that's uh, a brush hog or somewhere else. <laughs> the money can be found, I understand that, but I'd hate to see us um, have to lose uh, uh, funding elsewhere and then also not have the income coming from the taxpayers and the revenue of the city and we're going to have to cut even more uh, in the future. Do I think people deserve more money? Yes, I think they do a great job. I'm not saying any of that, but I think we should be cognizant of how much we're increasing. Um, I don't know. Thoughts? I'm okay with 2,000, but I'm going to hold pretty much hold to 90,000 and try to put that forward to the full council. I just think the 90,000 is appropriate for the mayor. Um, if you look at this, if we did 3,000, and 1,000 for this council president, and 15. The total for the first fiscal year is, is 12,800 because you're only paying fiscal year 22. You're only paying half of these salaries because they begin January 1st. So it doesn't get to the 25,600 or more until the second fiscal year, which is FY 23. So we're going to have two years from now. Um, I would be happy to increase the school committee, and if you want to go to 2,000, I'll leave it to the, if the committee feels that way, that's fine. But I, I'm going to stick to the 90,000. I really feel that that position, because it's a four-year term, there's no increase in that position for another four years. So you can increase the council, you can increase the school committee every two years, but you can't do the mayor's position. And planning assessors and zoning and, and or planning assessors and BPW, you can do that at any time. So if we want to defer that, I understand that to make it less. I guess that's just my position right now. I'm okay with increasing the school committee if that's the preference of the full committee to put that forward. I think that's Omar makes a great point on that. I just think the BPW three hundred dollars a year is insulting. I think they should get something more, but okay. We've talked a lot about this. We want to just put this in our heads and come back. Hey, I just want to make one more comment that um, I understand that our committee people do not make a lot of money, um, and one could even characterize it as insulting. But again, I keep coming back to, we have a lot of unknowns facing us. And until those unknowns become known, I, I, I don't think we should go all in on some of this right out of the gate because um, while I think Jen and Val are keeping us completely whole and doing amazing things and we're in a great position, um, we don't know what's going to happen down the line. And um, I, I do agree the committees should get tons more money, but it's not, it, it doesn't feel like from a prioritization perspective that that should stay on the table. I, I kind of think that we may want to take it off the table um, or present it to the full council 
um, and, and potentially not vote on it here. Or if you want, we can. Um, I just don't know if it would come out in a positive light. So, you know, I, I just want I just want to make sure that, you know, we're attending to those things that I think are the most uh, critically needed right now. And I'm very concerned about a four year mayoral term sitting at the salary that they're at with all the things going on. And whoever comes up next has a big plate that they're going to have to deal with. And I just think that's a long time to ask somebody to put their career on hold. Well, I would be happy to defer the EPW planning and assessors for a little while. I would like to present it to the council as something I think the council should consider. Maybe I bring it forward at the end of the term just to see if, if where it would fly next year. Um, and obviously, the planning department members, for instance, they didn't ask for a raise in one year, maybe two or three terms ago, we asked them all if they wanted to have an increase and none of them said, no, we don't need it. So uh, I'm not quite sure. I just know how hard it is to get people on these committees, but they are dedicated, I'll give them that. So I'm okay with dropping those three committees. I'm okay with increasing the school committee. I think Omar makes a good point. Maybe it's only 2,000. Um, I did. 3,000 to match it to the BPW, but whatever you feel. The only thing I'm going to say is I think the council president, and maybe we should give the school committee chair a, a, a small bump, but I think we should do that. All of these have to be decided before December. The rest we can hold off on. Right, right. So why don't we think about it? Next meeting, make a final decision and present proposals to the full council. Okay. After the 25th. What do you guys think? You think that's okay, Bill? Wait, make a final decision next next time. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. And and um could you re-forward this attachment to me? Because I opened it up and it didn't have any numbers in the one that I got. Really? Yeah. You have it well? Should I make it a PDF maybe for you? Yeah, that yeah. would be fine too. Uh, I, I'd prefer an Excel spreadsheet if you have one. Well, I did send this today. The only thing I changed was I had FY21 down the bottom here. But it, what I'll do is I'll redo this. Um, I'll do this over tomorrow and send it all to you with with a 3000 a year here um, and a 2000 a year here, just so you have different numbers. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I'll take this out and put it as a separate line so that we know how much each of these will be increased over the years. Dan, you know what would be helpful is if you just create a new sheet, duplicate this sheet, but then just change row 52 on one sheet and call it committees included and on another sheet say committees excluded, just so we can have the big picture fully. Well, I, I kind of like seeing it all on one page, Peg. Okay. okay. And I figured yeah. out I figured out why I couldn't do it by I was looking at your uh, your thing. It's labeled sheet one, and I thought that that was just blank, so I didn't hit the tab to sheet one. Yeah, that was how I have it sent it back to me. Peg had redone this. Thank you, Peg. It, this is a lot easier to read. All right, I'll try to do something. And uh, uh, okay. And next meeting, we I was told today we were talking about a. A grant that's coming forward it has to move quickly um, to placate. They sent us a letter from the state that we've been approved for a grant, but we just got the letter, but we have to approve the matching funds immediately. <laughs> so we're going to get a appropriation this agenda, and it has to be put forward on October 7th to get it so that to match. We already approved it uh, applying for the grant. And it was like $92,000 match, but now it's way down from that because they didn't give us all the money. So anyway, that's coming forward. And this, okay. Thank you all. We'll see you in. Uh... Uh, would you like a motion to adjourn? Yes, please. I'll second. So it. moved. <laughs> Councilor Connors. Yes. Councilor Lynch. Yes. And Councilor Rich says yes. 
Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.